If I didn't have my violin from school, I would probably, I don't know what I would do. Don't even jinx me with that. <laughs> Let's start with the last repair shop because I feel like when you are thinking about the last repair shop, you're looking at it from a distance. You're like, okay, it's about four people who are repairing instruments for students in LAUSD. But upon watching it and really within the first few minutes for me, I was like, oh, this is way bigger than four individuals repairing instruments. This is about humanity. This is about heart, history. And really at its core, I feel like a love letter to music and how it unifies and brings everybody together. And I'm curious for you, like you've done so much. There's still so much to do. Like how has music saved your life? Music is just the thing that helped me uh, have this discipline and this focus and this uh, desire to uh, excel at something. And then I think beyond that, what I started to realize in hindsight is how much it provided this space for me to articulate emotions and these emotions that I think can be so troubling for any individual, especially for a young person trying to figure out how to navigate uh, sadness or anger or any of those things that anxiety, like anything that is not really that easy to talk to someone about. And this is also like, you know, before I even thought about the idea of going to a therapist or any of that kind of stuff, M music and the piano was my therapist. That was the way that I processed these emotions. That's the way that I felt like I had an emotion that I couldn't handle inside my person and then I could play it on piano and then move through it. I was 13, 13, 14. It's emotional because like, when you think about it, like, right now, 18, fresh out of high school, going to college, barely starting life, and I'm gonna find a way to somehow make music my career, my passion, my, my living. Without the two of us at school and the Susan ones at school, like, you never know, honestly. And I can't help but think about, like, because it does center these four voices and really kind of their life at the repair shop and what brought them there. But it also brings in the perspective of the students, some which I feel probably for you is like looking in a mirror. Yeah, it was so beautiful and, and so layered, you know, watching how these craftspeople, they're, they're never able to see the impact that they're having on, on, um, on a daily basis. And so for them to continue to toil away in this proverbial darkness, I think is so inspiring. When I went into interviewing those kids, I assumed that they wouldn't have the words to talk about what music meant to them. It felt like a very big question to be asking, you know, some of them nine years old, 10 years old. And for each of them, even the youngest ones to have such clarity in talking about what music meant for them, I think was so uh, profound to watch both in the interview and, and continues to feel profound as I watch the movie over and over again. When I'm feeling tense, when I'm feeling sad or angry, the saxophone, calms me down. When we started working on this project, I wasn't a parent. And my wife wow. and I weren't even talking about having kids, actually. Wow. Like, like, we were talking about having kids, but we weren't ready yet or weren't preparing for it. And so in the four years that we worked on this project, we decided to have a kid and, and now we have a daughter. And so watching... Uh, some of these interviews, especially Patty, I think talking about being a parent and what it meant for her to do her best to provide for her kids in those moments where she felt like she could in those moments where she finally could, I think impact me and hit me in such a deeper emotional way. I was single mother with two kids, very small. My daughter was three and my son was six. You have to figure it out. I started working at a music store in Thousand Oaks. The owner said, okay, I'm going to give you a chance for a week. One week. Vacuum the cases and preparing the musical instruments for him to get them fixed. So after a week, he said, you know what? I think we're going to keep you a little longer. Worked in that store for seven years. When you look at a music instrument that needs to be repaired, there's uh, such a great similarity to us as humans in terms of like the things we go through in life and how anything we go through just makes us an even more whole person on the other side of those experiences, you know? So immediately it became very clear that there was this beautiful analogy between like the repairing of these broken instruments and these individuals continuing to talk about this idea of, of them being broken in moments of their lives and picking themselves back up and, and repairing themselves and how music kind of helped that process. So I really think a lot of the message, once we really got into making it, became 
how important it is to, to remember that and to keep in mind this, this power of repair. That one instrument. Could change their whole life. In a way, you know, you can feel like, you know, you're fixing an instrument for the future Grammy winner if you want to kind of dream a little bit, you know. <laughs> Last Repair Shop obviously is really, really focusing on students in LAUSD. You are student LAUSD. Like, talk to me about just like that experience growing up, any programs you were a part of, and just your journey and really how it's really kind of helping to shape what you're doing now. My elementary school, I, I remember an orchestra coming in and talking about the sections of the orchestra and using John Williams' music to talk about each instrument. Like, you know, they would say, this is the bass section and play a bit of Jaws, or this is a French horn and play a bit of Star Wars. And so that feeling of like, oh, wow, these instruments are what are causing these feelings that I have when I watch these movies, I think goes back to, you know, fourth grade or whatever it was when I first saw that. Um, my middle school had an incredible music program where they brought in Lou Rawls and Al Jarreau and these incredible jazz musicians to do performances and master classes with us. And I had an incredible music teacher, Amos Stallone, that allowed me to basically make the music room my my like home. Like during lunch, I was mostly hanging out in the music room or, you know, anytime I had spare time, it was uh, that was a space where I felt most comfortable. I loved just like playing the piano whenever I, I um, had the time to do it. And so he was one of those teachers that really saw that in me and really instilled this idea that like, that in his mind, like I had a gift. And I think that was a time where I never thought about it that way. It's just like, oh, I'm kind of good at this thing. And he was like, no, you have something that you need to continue to to uh, take care of and, and uh, pursue. And then outside of school, there were so many programs like uh, the Spotlight Awards or the National Association of Negro Musicians or NAACP's AXO competition that I did. And um, each of those, the Dola Coker Foundation, like each of those also from the time I was maybe 10 or 11, really again surrounded me with these people that that showed me that there was something to what I was doing with, with this piano thing. I am who I am because of the people in my life from birth to now. You know, I think that between my parents sacrificing everything they, they did for me to have the opportunities to that I had or be in the spaces that I was in and every teacher, every mentor, every person that like, you know, would actually sit down and talk to me about whatever it was I was dreaming for myself and validated that and told me that that's a good thing to, to believe in. Um, and, you know, down to my wife and my, my daughter and the people that I, you know, live so much of my life for, I feel like, yeah, I am who I am because of the amalgamation of every individual that's that's touched my life.